I feel like I cover a lot of the news, right? And what does the news do? Like, you, you kind of watch it and they have their own perspective and flips out, right? What they want to say, right? So, uh, my idea behind this is like, when I record the news and I send over myself, I kind of only see 30 seconds. And it's like, oh, I want to pick that 30 seconds, right? So, the idea here is to build an audience to where Philly can look on YouTube and see like what is going on, what the actual people on the street are saying about what's going on, and, you know? Yeah, here, you know? Yeah, yeah. So, uh, what part of Philly are you from? Far northeast. Okay. I am born and raised by what, what used to be Franklin Mills Mall. That's now Philadelphia Mills. It's, yeah. It was purchased out. Um, but Franklin Mills was amazing in its heyday. I will never forget it. Like, they had the big Ben Franklin head inside the mall, and I actually, my friend just sent me a, an Instagram reel of, like, a commercial from back in 1991. With the Ben Franklin, Franklin guy, the, oh, it's all electric. Exactly. I just saw exactly. that. Exactly, exactly. That's crazy. And that was, it was 100% like that. And it, was, <laughs> it was awesome. They had, like, a fudge place, and they did, like, a song, and yeah. it was it was it. It was the vibe. It was what you did. It was, uh, it was a good place to live. So I grew up, I was born and raised there. Um, I could walk there from the house that I currently live in, and okay. it was like, it was, it was everything. It was great. Do you think Philly needs more places like that again? 100%. Like, that was a whole community, like... It was, it was know. a thing. Well, even, even, we were just talking and walking down the street, and I, I mean, you're talking about Saturday night on South Street, and it's... Empty. It's empty. Yeah. Like, this, this, I, like, I wish I could have seen it in its heyday, and like been a part of what that was because god knows before covid you know mm-hmm. it was way different but even this is like it's just empty like they have streets just blocked off per block it's like i'm, I'm like it's saturday night and the city's dead it's like yeah this is not scary but holy shit it's it's just different a lot more people don't go out anymore right Correct. they don't go out and socialize and when they do it's just for one bar right yes. and then they get in the uber and they go home it's not like uh I mean, you watch the news and block parties end in disaster in Philadelphia, right? They so like, can, unfortunately. Yeah, yeah so it, it's it's a scary thing. Do you want to go out and enjoy the night, or do you not want to wake up tomorrow because you went out to enjoy the night? To enjoy the night, right? Yeah. So, and I feel like the more like people do stuff like this and kind of build a community, like we have, you familiar with graffiti here? I am. So like that's kind of like a hidden gem. If you ever go down there, it just collapsed. So I don't know what's going on with it now. Oh, I hadn't heard that. That's true. Yeah, the, the top end of it just kind of fell into itself and the end just kind of collapsed. But oh, now it's kind of no. like very relevant to anybody that goes there. It could just literally it, it collapse. Did, it could just, just fall. Yeah. Nice. So, and like if you go there uh, during the summer, like on a Friday or Saturday night, there will be a race, like a block party at Graffiti Pier, like DJs, lights, people with hula hoops. Like it's, a, it's own little community. That's what's up. Um, and, and I feel like South Street, I've been coming here since like probably 2012, 2013. Okay. The only difference now is you don't have the through traffic. So like it used to be you would drive down all the flights or the cars and people walk park up and like just yep. chill. 100%. Right? Yep. Now it's a traffic jam. So you don't want to do that, right? Once you hit 8th Avenue or 8th Street, it's a parking lot. Yeah. You can't get in the 5th Street. It's so, just all the way down. Yep. Yeah. So that hinders. Like when you talk to people out here, a lot of them are from this area, right? They're walking here. And that's nice that every neighborhood needs that. Like, we need something up by us, right? I live at Frank Laird and uh, Linda Nash. So okay, like, yeah, yeah. Just like when uh, we win a Super Bowl or like something down at Cotman in Frankfurt, that whole block is at five points. It's just shut electric, down. yeah. Yeah, so like they should do that. They should have designated block areas where they, if they want to bring black parties back in a safe manner, do it like this. Right. right, have a couple of bars that are in the area that can, you know, facilitate exactly and run street venues and uh, just like have a community go back to it. Oh, great, great. Um, sure. What do you do for work? Do you do any- I'm a teacher, actually. Okay, okay. In Philadelphia. In Philadelphia. Okay, so my cousin used to teach in Philadelphia. He now okay. teaches at St. Joe's. So, how long have you been doing that? Uh, I'm going to my third year, actually. Okay, so congrats. That's, Thank you. It's, uh, have you taught anywhere else other than Philly? No. 
<laughs> so Philly's the hardest, I feel like. And, and, you know. I, yeah, it's, it's, been, it's been an adventure. It's, uh, I, I think I'm born and raised here. It just kind of happened, so I fell into it, and it was an amazing thing. And I, I don't see going anywhere else with it, but it's okay. what, if opportunity presents itself, we'll see what happens. But okay. I'm not opposed, but not looking, so you know, just ride the wave. So way. you may not have a unique perspective yeah. as a teacher, right? What part of Philly are you in? Where I'm at, actually, oh, northeast. Okay. So northeast. So like, they say like the problems as children, like if we don't fix them, right? They only get worse. Okay. Like, so on the Do you see in your classroom some behaviors from your like pupils, uh, right? That you see that have gotten worse on the street as they've gotten older, like in the community, like things that maybe necessarily parents haven't like fixed or worked on or like kind of like hey we got to solve this and then it kind of grows out of hand and then now we see it on the news and like yeah. I feel like the most danger I see anymore like I ride motorcycles and stuff and okay. usually you see the dirt bikes are the danger but anymore it's like the bicycle kids right like the kids that gather and like the 12 to 17 year olds are gathered hundreds down like broad and stuff do you see like anything in the school that you see hand in hand out in like the real world and, Literally everything. It's uh, I mean, just society, culture has changed. I, I, parents, I mean, I am not a parent, so I can't speak specifically to that avenue because I'm not one. But it just seems like it's just been a vast, it's been a vast change. Like, a, like the, the, the culture of it is just wholly different. With kids are so used to having a, a screen to facilitate distraction as opposed to like oh we're gonna go out some okay here's your phone here's the ipad here's the whatever it is and it's okay as long as the kid's quiet and not causing a disturbance it's like yeah but okay but that's also not that's not parenting it's like you're just you're distracting your child and then you run into these issues where the kids are defiant they just they don't care they're distracted super easily and everyone's so quick to slap that label on where it's Oh, they have ADHD or ADD or they have, just, they can't focus or they wonder because there's so much content coming at them and they're so like, it's a screen face. It's, you know, spend time just playing with your friends, playing with whoever, like play dates. I can't tell you the last time I heard, oh, let's have a play date. It's like, they, just, they don't exist anymore. Why? Because where we're at, just, people just don't set them up. They don't do it. So it's just, it's a, it's a different thing than it used to be. Like, I used to have them all the time. Can't even imagine what it's like now. Okay, it's not a parent, but it's it's just not the same. I feel like parents want to be less inconvenient, right? It's more convenient to hand the kid an iPad and be like, all right, now I don't hear the kid for a few hours. I can relax, right? Rather than I just got done work for eight hours. Now I'm gonna take care of the child for another four and like right, interact right. with them. And I feel like it is stipending the whole society, not only with like attention span, right? Like I barely have an attention span. I, I didn't grow up with one. I have that, right? And uh, just like human emotion, there's no normalcy anymore. Everybody's got it, their own kind of introverted, isolated interaction, how they kind of perceive what was okay and not okay by what media they viewed right there on that topic. Correct, correct, uh, absolutely. So it's a scary thing. What what is one thing you could change? If you could just kind of like simplify, I know it's so easy just to say it, right? <laughs> like, but like maybe if enough of us said it and enough of us heard it, right? right. Somebody would actually understand it. I, I think, is it, it just in general? Uh -oh. I'm sorry, I thought No, 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 I, I, was, I, was, I thought the same thing. <laughs> Which is why it's too tempting right now. Right. Um, Ah, uh, goodness gracious. Um, I, would, I would think just taking screens away or limiting screen time would be a good start. You know, like just normalizing, getting back to going out somewhere and just, hey, let's just sit together. What do we talk about? I don't know, find something, anything. Literally just sit, just start conversation and then let the conversation take course and just let it exist. It's like just kids today on a large scale just don't know how to socialize. They just don't, they don't know how to do it. It's not a thing. So just normalizing that to any extent where it's take the phones away and just, what do we do now? It's like, sit in the room. Okay, let them do what? And they're all going to look at each other and not know what, but guess what? At some point they're going to figure it out and go, hey, let's talk about this. Let's talk about this. And all of a sudden you have a class conversating about life. Like it's just, it's just communicate. Basic, basic human communication. Just start, start with simplistic. How else do you, like, 
How else do you do it? Just start with a, hey, five people at the table. Let's just take all your phones away. Put them in a basket. Put it down. Now what? I don't know. We'll just sit here in awkward silence until someone starts talking about something and then see where it goes. And maybe, maybe it only lasts 10 minutes. It's like, wow, this really isn't going anywhere. Maybe, maybe it lasts two and a half hours. You're like, wow, what started as this weird thing is now like, oh, wow, we're actually connecting. Yes. Human actual connection. Relevant conversation. But you don't know unless you try. Yeah, and I think we got to get out of it soon. I mean, I'm 29, and like I go out, and I didn't grow up on the screen, and I still see everybody where I go out. And it's fun. You got to be like, yeah, dude, did you get here today? You know? So it's a scary thing, and I think uh, it's going to be dangerous for like 10 years from now. Yeah, like, everybody no, I, I am relatively, not completely, but I, I am mildly, relatively frightened for the future because I just don't know. I know at the course that it's on what it in theory will look like and it just I know what I grew up with so it's just like a uh, <laughs> yeah. it's literally petrifying to me to think like I, I don't like what that looks like so it's like how do you course correct I don't know I could try doing what I think should happen but again I'm just one person so you know you could try but what's that well, what does that ultimately mean it's like I have to go could go somewhere, it could go nowhere, but 10 years from now, it's like, I, from the first one, I just, I don't like it at all. Well, you do have the unique position to be one of very few people, I mean, there's a lot of people here, right? But, I feel like teaching is a dying art, right? It's, they're, like, I, I have a mentor, right? He's much older. Yes, absolutely. And, um, and we don't have many people to teach us trades and things like this. Like, I ran across the right? It's just kind of come down to the bare minimum. K to 12, maybe you do some college, get out there and pay off. Yeah. So I hope that you have a chance to change generations. It was good. Michael. Michael. Wow. Way off. Way off. I'm yeah, sorry. No worries. I hope you have the time to change people for the future. And I thank you what you do. It, it takes patience to teach somebody and else's it, kids. It, it, patience is number one requirement. If there's anybody out there, you, if this ever gets anywhere, patience, patience, patience. You have to be even patient with yourself to start. Just realize it mostly comes from a place of not knowing. And that's the thing, the thing that I got from it when I first started was like, People slash kids, they just, they're just not aware of what they don't know. So it started from a place of where there's this, there, there used to be an assumed like, well you never told us? No, I was told this. Okay, so now you're just being ignorant. Kids today just don't have that. It's like, do you know this now? Oh, you, you just, you were unaware completely. Oh, so we have to like start from ground zero and build up. But it's just a misinformation thing where I feel, I feel like the former generations assume that there's certain things that are like known. And they're, they're just not anymore. They're just not taught, they're not established, they're not implemented. And it's just, when you know that, it, oh, oh, I have, to, I have to now be the person to, to show you this. Oh, okay, cool. Reel this back. How do we get the, like, I can show you, I just now have to figure out exactly what that means, because you don't even know the base level of information that I'm working with. Okay, let's, let's, let's build it, but holy shit, that's never been. So it's like it starts from that like base level of the building, right? Now, does that feel fulfilling to you? Like very, especially yeah, naturally. When you see when you see kids click, even if it's just one child in the class of thirty, and you see like I'm struggling up, but you see that one kid kind of have that moment of oh, oh, I get it. And they start to go. It's like okay, only one, but hey, it's a starting point, so it's worth it. For sure. Thank you very much, Michael. You I have a good night. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's your name? My name is Linda. What's your Linda name? Dan. Linda Dan. Very nice to meet you, Linda. I like that name. So, what? Tell us what happened behind us. You were parked over there. I was there? parked right there. Where's my car at? So, I don't know. This was news to me two weeks ago, right? They mm -hmm. closed down this road for people to walk from 10 to 2. So, if you look. They, they stole everybody's car, That's Linda. what I'm saying. Why the fuck do they do that? So, it says up on the red, right? It's so confusing. They put a green sign, then a red sign. Do it you says think, 12, right? Does it not say 12? No, it's 10. 10? Okay. 10 p.m. But do you think they need bigger signs? Like, see how they have they the barricades? They need fucking bigger signs. South Street is trash. 
I hate South Street. Well, you had to come here for a reason. You wanted to have a good I night, not. right? I would not. came to Fat Tuesdays. I'm, all I care is about Fat Tuesdays. South okay. Street is fucking trash. Why do you think South Street is everybody's, tra- everybody's cars is gone. Yeah, everybody got jacked. Oh, uh, now and- I'm going to get it. Now I gotta get my car out. Do you think it's wrong for Philadelphia to do? Do you live in Philly? Yes, I live in Philly. I lived in Philly my whole life, and it's I never go through anything like this except on South Street. And I was not even gonna fucking park right there. So, so I'm gonna expect my friend because she's the reason I parked right there. Okay. I'm gonna park on the side. It's, uh, do you think? It's irresponsible to them not to notify, like, its citizens. Like, hey, like, Rittenhouse Square is about to do the same thing. They're about to close down all of Rittenhouse Square They just start every weekend. The- South Street is dumb. They made me, listen, they made me come back, right, come to South Street. They're like, okay, you don't have your ID? You can't come in. I leave fucking Fat Tuesdays, go get my ID. I come back, they're not even fucking carting me. You made me go do all that. Go get my ID. Go get dressed. Go do all this. You're not even fucking carding me. You didn't even ask for my new card. Well, I think that's that's a business by business uh, thing. Right. No, they're fucking dumb. They're dumb. I don't agree with anything they have going on. They never... Take me off of here because they're not... <laughs> <laughs> Do you think there should be a huge sign at the beginning of the block at Fifth yes. Street that says, if hey... If it's that deep, yes, it, it should be a huge sign if it's that deep. Well, they've definitely they made... They took everybody's card. They've definitely made five to $10,000 so you, you in You made cars. it, yes, you made it a big deal. Take everybody's shit. You don't even make it a... You don't even make it seem like it's a big deal on the streetlights. Do you think it's messed up that they kind they of police this? They make it seem like they this? don't care. Well, I think... I think they they kind of say that they care. Say, they say they're um, they're condoning was the violence. Up. This was really fucked up. I agree. Everybody, I agree. Had, you know how much fees the tolls are. Mm-hmm. They have they to pay could for do a toll some, fee and everything. They could do something like this in Kensington and shut down That's Kensington every Friday and Saturday night and they, stop the drugs. But here they, they they're getting They care about money. South Street more than fucking Kensington. Well, Kensington doesn't make look. Think Kensington does make. How much do you think this is going to cost I you live, tonight? No, I live under Kensington. So how much do you think your car this gets towed? This is like $500. Is, so they probably towed 20 cars. That's exactly. probably fifteen how to much twenty thousand dollars I live under Kensington. I live on Jay and Tayoga. You think you, I ever had this problem? Well, they don't care. They'd rather you fucking get high than get drunk. They don't care. They don't care. They don't care. Well, they can get $20,000 out of people drinking, they can't get $20,000 out of the drug addicts in Kensington. No, but they're under Kensington. No, under Kensington, I get a lot of tickets. I got a lot of tolls. I get... You get towed in Kensington, too? Yes, even really? in Kensington. Okay, okay. Now, why do you And it's fucked get- up because supposedly we're supposed to get parking. We're supposed to get all of that. I don't get all of that. So, is it like a parking permit? Like, you go yes, down like... Yes, yes, okay. yes. We're supposed to. Do you pay for the parking permit no. every year? That that might be why you get into But we're supposed to pay for it every month. They also don't let us pay for it every month. Yeah. Okay. I don't understand the building. That's why I'm. This is my last month in the building. Thank okay. God. Okay. Where are you gonna move to now? What part are you staying like in? Up Philly? the boulevard. Okay. Okay. But it's also not that good where I'm at right now. Clearly. Right. Which is why I'm leaving there. I didn't think this was gonna happen. Honestly, I really did not think this was gonna happen. So what's your plans now? The first thing you come out of the bar and you realize your car's gone, what are your, what's going through your head? I'm gonna have to go in there in the morning. Sunday morning, are they open on Sundays? I don't know. PPA lot. They take them to the PPA lot. It's fucked up. You'd think they'd just move them. I don't like, know. Like, down the block. And put, I guess then they gotta find parking for everything. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I think it's wrong to charge your citizens. Like that. I think it's wrong when you don't even give them a chance. Cause in my building, honestly, we're supposed to all get like a chance to like park and stuff. Everybody's supposed to have like we have parking in my building. Do you think they give parking to the people or no? Only if you work in the building. Well, you, you got to be organized. It depends how big how the parking lot is. How much do you think you could work in the building? You know. Right. I don't work. I work at a nail salon. I do nails. Okay. So it's like, what? What can I do in the building? I can't do anything. So. You could do. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. So. Yeah. I feel like it's very biased. 
Well, well people, people kind of only care not, for I was, themselves. I, I now. honestly did not expect to come out to my car too. Yeah, I, I feel bad for you. I feel bad for everybody that came out I feel to like this street. Nobody even really knows that their cars, cars are cars gone. Sold. Yeah. I was not expecting it, and I'm really angry because I feel like I was telling my friend I don't want to park in front of South Street. So, and honestly, my car is under my last name, and she's probably so upset. Well, hopefully she's asleep, and she's not dealing with the stress. Uh, but I, I, I do think that they need a, uh, a big sign where they close off the road that says, Warning, if you park past this point, you will be towed. Like, you know. Well, thank you very much, Linda. I greatly appreciate you sitting down. Thank you. I I'm sorry about your car. I hope, you know. I would say go talk to your councilman. Thank you. And, um. Let's see how that works. Yeah. Thank you. Dan, very nice to meet you. Tasha. Tasha. So, what part of Philly are you from? South Philly. Okay. So, your entire Thanks. life? Queens Village. Okay, Queens Village. What, uh, what's your favorite thing to do in Philly? Like, growing up throughout your life, what is your favorite activity all Philadelphia? City of brotherly love. What is the first thing that you're like, I'm going to go do this in Philly? I would have to say our parks and recreation. Okay. And food. Okay, okay. So, uh, there, there is one park I love uh, specifically. It's like a hidden off the gem park, it's a graffiti pier. Okay, I was gonna talk about FDR, but that's Okay, FDR, that's another big one for me too, the skate park, I love hanging mm -hmm. out there. There's always something to film there. Mm -hmm. um, now, what is the least favorite part of Philly for you? It doesn't have to be a place, it could be a thing, like, what is something you have to deal with in Philly that you're just like, oh. The lack of community and the violence. Yes. Um, so I'm 43 years old. Okay. And my first job ever at 17 is literally right behind us at Condom Kingdom. No way! <laughs> Shout out to Condom Kingdom. Boop, 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 boop. <laughs> That's crazy. I, know. I learned a lot there at 17. 17, um, and that place is still around. I guess yeah. it's a very needed thing, condoms. <laughs> In I mean, kingdoms. Yeah. Condoms, boobs. Yeah. yeah. Um. But yeah, just, uh, I don't like how it's turned to so adolescent violence. It's yeah. not the old heads. It is definitely the younger generation. I mean, I've ran into more issue with young cats than I have ever ran into older cats my entire life been mm. in Philly. And it's no repercussions. They grew up without repercussions, right? So like- Because they were seven babies. Right. There's no grandmas, there's no get your ass in the house when the street lights come on. Right. Now, you, you've been here a long time, 20 plus years. Uh, yeah, you've I worked seen, there in 97. So, you've seen South Street from the 90s to yes. now. Back Huge when there used difference. to be picnic, uh, back when they used to have the Greek picnic here. What's a Greek, like? Um, the Greek picnic is when all the fraternities and sororities would gather on South Street, mostly African American. Okay. Um, uh, Deltas, Alphas, uh, Qs okay. would gather here and all the men would stand along the walls and all of them would just walk the circle. That'd be a sight to see. And it was, it was, it was awesome until women started coming up missing and the break, you know, but people just got out of pocket. Right, they ruined it. There used it. to be respect. Right, right. It's, do you think closing down the streets like this will bring stuff like that back or do you I mean this has been going on for a year now and it's kind of dead no exactly um seeing South Street like this this dead it's because the people in the actual city don't want to come anymore right. it used to be a big tourist spot but even the tourists don't come anymore which is taking money away from our city which we desperately need yes um you know with the shootings and robberies and beatings just, it's just stupid. It's but very no, I don't think that them shutting it down, like, I mean, their presence just says violence. Their presence says violence. Now, what do you think would change the violence in the city? 
if people were accountable for their own, if people knew their neighbors. Yeah. If you, um, like when I was growing up, if my mom was at work, the neighbor was allowed to discipline me. The neighbor was allowed to be like, you know, uh, I see you, I'm going to tell your mom. And that was enough to be like, you know. A sense and, of community, a strong sense that's, of community. And then of everything, that's what Philly is missing. Like, there's no more brotherly love, and that's basically what we're talking about. Yeah, well, I mean, talk about it like 50 years, 100 years ago, right? You you interacted with everybody around you so much that you would see everybody for at least four to six hours every day. Your, right. your auntie, your, your cousin down the street, your neighbor, you guys, there was no phones, there was no tablets. Everybody saw each other in real person, in mm. real life, and mm. interacted and, and got the vibe like, oh, you're having an off day, or you're having a bad day, or right. you're sick. Oh, you, or didn't, like, you didn't eat today. You don't got a jacket on? Take this jacket. You got to walk to school. And that's a sense of care, a sense mm. of belonging. People don't have that. I feel like gentrification messed it up too. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I mean, it divided cultures. You didn't have culture anymore. You didn't have mm. a sense of community. You have mm. people that come in and... And I say it all the time, like, uh, American white people, right? We have no sense of community. We were like no. very crude people, no. like no very culture. isolated. Right. Yes, like, right. I, I think the Russians do it best. They're very, like, um, very strong community. They're very, like, they take care of one another. They're almost like the Indians. Like, the Indians come to the America, they come with, like, four of their cousins, they buy a donut shop or a gas station, they okay. all live in one house. And that's the difference. Yes. And that's the difference. They can come and get a grant and start a business and buy a home and everything like that. But the black people that are here in the spacers and the way we built this city can't have those opportunities. Right. So then the black people can buy the and come in and move and get all these opportunities when we can't even get it ourselves. And that's just unfair to everybody, you know to what everybody. I mean? To everybody. So if everybody was to just put like a little bit of two cents in, I mean, I work for care, the nonprofit, so okay. I know all the stats. I'm, I mean, I have two children myself, and the stats are sickening. Sickening. And if, you, if, a, if someone just like didn't have a Starbucks once a week, because the changes they can make in the world is ridiculous. But it's just so me, 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 and self indulged that it's. Well, we've almost been cultivated to be that way, right? Like, you look at That's schools, right? And it's not like... your prisons. Right? You look at everything. It's, uh, you know, you're, you're trained to be self-sufficient, right? And to get the best grade in the class and be the best of the class like the highest attendance right. or and the that's straight how A's. yeah and then there is no like even looking back like when you did like group projects and stuff you, you always had the one kid that did more right mm. one kid that did nothing right mm. and then just got to sit and get all the benefits from it like if it was always like that if school taught you how to be part of a group Right, and if all the assignments weren't individual assignments, but mm -hmm. group assignments, and instead of just once a year, you learned, okay, that one kid ain't ever gonna do nothing. Well, if you did group assignments throughout the year every week, that and one kid is eventually gonna force to do something, right? Mm -hmm. Or change. You know, they're gonna uh, learn in that peer group, that culture of that classroom. Hey, this one kid does nothing, right? No matter what group we put him in, he doesn't contribute right so what can we do to get him to contribute everybody learns different though I want I want the schools to stop putting everyone on the same learning curve okay so like so maybe he's not contributing in the way he knows how not that he's lazy or she's lazy maybe it's just not the way they um, communicate or or um, contribute to the class I and, mean, and I and I think it's you're like totally cookie right color. it's cookie cutter right and I think if we do more of a group thing you you're able to define that easier you're able to shape that and mm. understand that rather than like all right well we did it one time he doesn't do the groups well he'll do normal and, life by himself fair. great you know what I mean mm -hmm. he'll be able to do taxes get a mortgage contributing their own special skills like this person's good at building this person's good at writing, this person's good at art. Right. That's one thing I loved about Philly. I went to Catholic for art. And okay. a lot of people hated their high school experience. I loved it. And it's all what you make it. 
right? So like we all. But now the whole bullying. I mean the suicide rates. I feel like I'm telling you, I know all these stats. But it's a scary thing yeah. when you know the numbers, right? Mm-hmm. 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 It is. Um, well, one thing you wish that uh, Philly would hear, right? Like we we kind of. We talk a lot, right? Uh, Mm -hmm. Us people, right? What's one thing you wish people would hear from others more? Like when you're talking, like just normal, like run into somebody on the street and you go, hey, have a good day. Or like, hey, how's your day going? What do you wish people would hear more from one another? Sincerity. Okay. Um, And I try and do that. But sometimes if I can give a compliment to a random person and they'd be like, what you want from me? It's not that I want anything from you. I just sincerely want you to have a good day. It's a rare thing anymore, just somebody talking to you without people, wanting something from it. I want people to hear sincerity. Well, thank you very much. Mm-hmm. I greatly appreciate your time. Stay cool. If they wanted to follow you, do you have Instagram? Yeah, follow me at JBell's mom. Stay cool, guys. So, Luke, you live on South Street now. Where, where did you live before? Did you live in Philly? No, I went to school in Massachusetts, so I was living up there. Oh, so huge difference. Yeah, big difference. Okay, yeah. so was it a shock now? Did you live in a city in Massachusetts? I lived in the city of Worcester. Okay, yeah. compared to the city, I, I'm not very familiar, yeah. right? <laughs> compared yeah. to Philly, is it a lot bigger, smaller? It's a lot smaller. Okay. Yeah, a lot smaller. It's more of a college town. Okay, was it almost like a culture shock, like an everything kind of shock, moving from Massachusetts to here? Yeah, yeah, definitely a, a very different city, different area. What's the yeah. biggest thing you think the difference between where you came from and where you are now? Um, there's just so much more going on here. Okay. Yeah, like there's always some. I live on South Street, and clearly there's just always something going on in South Street. So yeah, it I is. I really like that. Yeah. yeah. How old are you? I'm 22. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, at least you're exploring life young. Yeah, yeah, what yeah. What made you move to Philly? I got a job here. Okay. Yeah. What, what kind of work do you do? I'm an engineer. Okay. Yeah. Electrical, civil? Mechanical. Okay. Mechanical. Mechanical. There yeah. you go. You I'm got a brain engineer. on you, Luke. Yeah, yeah. There you go. A small one. A small <laughs> one. <laughs> Not if you're an engineer. <laughs> That's good. So, are are you happy you moved to Philly? Yeah, yeah. So okay. far, I've been honestly so happy I've moved to Philly. What yeah. what, it, what is it that makes you happy that you're here? Um, just so much going on okay honestly all the people i've met have been extremely friendly that's good yeah, some yeah. of us some of us every you know? for me at least so far that's good you've been, stayed in person. the better parts of town then i guess i guess yeah, yeah. <laughs> how long have you been here about two and a half weeks oh wow yeah, yeah. yeah you're very real new. fresh real yeah, fresh yeah. okay very new okay have you had any bad experiences yet um Honestly, not that I can think of. Okay. Really? Okay. Just so I'll teach you one thing. Golden rule, Philly. Don't stare at somebody too long. <laughs> <laughs> you can, like, look at them. You give them a little yeah, yeah. head nod or, like, usually it's, like, they up. But if they just keep staring at you and they don't do nothing, look away and get away. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah that, they're on drugs. <laughs> All right. Yeah, I'll, yeah, I'll, yeah, I'll yeah. try to avoid that. Well, yeah. I'll try to I'm avoid not, the staring. Yeah. yeah. Well, so I feel like... Um, that's how, like, people people in Philly, like, you, you look up somebody up and down, you make eye contact with them, and it's like the handshake, like, before in the 1800s, you shake somebody's hand, you say, hey, I'm not going to shoot you, you know what I mean? <laughs> in Philly, it's like you look somebody up and down, and you go, all right, we're cool, you know yeah, what yeah. I mean? Or it's like, we're not cool, you know what I mean? There are places in Philly, uh, I don't know if anybody's told you this, that, like, if you stand on the wrong block, somebody will be like, yo, what are you doing here? Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? So. What are you doing? Exactly, you know. <laughs> so it's it's a wild place. I, I call Philly GTA. Yeah, you know yeah. What I mean, it, have you ever played GTA? Yeah, yeah. So it's like there are places like South Street where it's like you know its own little sector, right? And then you go to other places like Chinatown, and it's a whole new map, right? Yeah, yeah. So uh, yeah, it, yeah, it's yeah. cool. Um, do, do you plan to live in Philly forever? Now coming, or is this a little stepping stone um, for you? I'm not too sure as of right now. It depends on where the career goes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I would be open to it though. Philly is pretty fun. <laughs> yeah. Well, hopefully yeah. we'll check in with you in a year and see how you feel. <laughs> um, so, uh, what are some things? Did you look up Philly when you were like going to move here? Did you look up like what things to do in Philly and like? 
Well, I know I know Philly sports are are huge. Yeah, yeah. So I've been following the Eagles for a while now. Okay. Yeah. Have you gone to any of the events? No, not yet. Okay. Not are yet. you a drinker? You drink? Yeah, yeah. The tailgating squad. They started like 10 a.m. Dude. I'm excited for that. <laughs> yeah. I'm definitely gonna be a part of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah That's yeah. cool. That's definitely yeah. its own like block party. Have you ever been to a block party? Uh, <laughs> probably not a Philly block party. Okay. Yeah. So they're cool. Uh, Manny Young just had one today, like a. A dogs and beer block party. Oh, you can fun, bring yeah. like your dog out on Maniunk and like walk and drink beer on the main street. Or they had like fake grass so your dog's feet didn't get hot. Yeah, it yeah. wasn't too hot today, thankfully. But you know, <laughs> yeah, yeah. there are things to do everywhere in Philly. Um, okay. So that's cool. That's cool. Was there one thing you were excited to do when you came to Philly? Like one thing that everybody told you to check out as a new Philadelphia, and they were like, "You gotta go do this when you get to Philly." Is there anything like that for you? Uh, a lot of people told me to check out Penn's Landing. Okay, Penn's yeah. Landing's cool. Yeah, so seeing that has been pretty interesting. I mean, okay. there's a whole submarine over there. Yes, so. there is. And yeah. Mo- Mushu, the boat is over yeah, there. Yeah. And, and uh, uh, what There's is a it battleship called? across the river, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, I'm drawing the blank. Um, Spirit of Philadelphia. Yeah. Those like dinner cruises, you go go eat on a boat and like drive up and down like yeah, yeah. all of uh, the Delaware River. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So it, there is, I, I mean, I guess living here almost my entire life, you, you forget about the cool little things you could do. Yeah, yeah. Um, so what did you do for fun back in Massachusetts? Uh, really just hang out with my friends. Okay. That I went to college with, yeah. Yeah, so just socialize. Yeah, messing around with my buddies, yeah. So, uh, if you had to pick a hobby, there's so many things to do and so many hobbies to do in the city and people that do them, what what would that kind of be? What do you think you get yourself into? Like, to find the new group of friends, I assume you don't have the same friends from Massachusetts here, right? I I don't know anyone here, really. So, how, Um, where would you, where do you think you plan to start on meeting new people in Philly definitely bar hopping okay yeah okay so tonight that's what I've been trying to do a little bit okay um what do they call oh they've been saying that to me all week uh but I always forget Mm. there's a bar on the street that everybody loves I forget it dang not a good remember um tattooed mom no, yes, a lot of people do go to Tattoo Mom. That's like yeah. iconic city. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Mirage. Mirage on South Street. That's a, that's another very popular bar. Um, well, just a little intel. There's uh, there's huge skating and bicycle community. They meet at like all the skate parks all around. I met around the Philly, Philly E-Riders. Yeah, they're wild, dude. Yeah, they can wheelie E-Riders. for a while, dude. Yeah, yeah. They have a huge following too, like yeah. uh, Baby Locks. <laughs> Sub <Thank> Um <laughs> They uh, they have like a rave scene, like at um, Graffiti Pier and like uh, FDR Park and okay. Payne's Park. They do like nighttime like DJ setup and That's do like cool, house yeah. music. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, they got it was like one wheels. You ever seen them? Yeah yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. They got a whole like just like the e-bike community. They got a whole bunch of them that meet up at the art museum. Yeah, art yeah. museum's a good specter. There's always people there, um, especially the steps on a Friday or Saturday night. Tons yeah, yeah. of people. Um, Manion's a good spot to like bar hop. Yeah, yeah. Know? But yeah, there's a cool. There's a bunch of cool stuff and. I'm thankful you sat down and checked in with us. And uh, <laughs> Thank you, if the people wanted to find you and follow you, where could they? You have Instagram? Yeah, I got I got Instagram. Uh, <laughs> did I just shout it out? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah it's just uh, Luke dot Rogers four. There you go, That's Luke. It. There you go. Well, thank you very yeah. much. Thank you, man. Max. Are you from Philly? No. No. Okay. Where are you from? Uh, Randwick, New York. Randwick, New York. Okay, is that like upstate by like like Ontario, like uh, over by North Han- uh, New it's, Hampshire? It's near um, West Point, two hours north of um, New York City. West Point's so, beautiful area, yeah, not very too far beautiful from. area. Um, that's you guys have that other Lady Liberty in the middle of the river, right? 
Uh, yes, yes, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. It's it's beautiful area. Yeah. Beautiful area. Um, what brings you to Philadelphia? I went to uh, university in Philadelphia. I went to St. Joseph's University. Okay, my cousin goes there. My other cousin teaches there. Oh, very cool. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. yeah. Very cool. Uh, so, what do you think about Philly? Live in like beautiful area of New York and and a very wealthy wealthy area. Uh, you know, I've yeah. seen some of the houses there blow my mind. Uh, what do you think about Philly coming from an area like that? I love Philly. Yeah. Okay. Philly's cool. Okay. A lot of. Uh, young people, a lot of good restaurants, a lot of yes. bars, and a lot to do. So Philly's a great place, and there's kind of something for everyone in Philly. I currently live in New York City, so okay. uh, I always enjoy Philly because uh, there's a lot of similarities in terms of how much there is to do and all that there is to experience. I feel like Philly's the little brother to New York City. You go maybe, into New York. But, yeah, I mean, maybe, but it's still it's still a really good time. I always enjoy coming back and seeing familiar places. We um, went to Jaime's, shout out to Jaime's in okay. Lower Marion, the best uh, Jewish deli there is. So, okay, yeah, yeah, it's yeah, good. yeah. It's good. Where, now is Jaime's your favorite? Like, what's the first thing you're driving to Philly? First yeah. thing you're excited to do once you get counting go to, lines? Go to Jaime's. Go to yeah. Jaime's. Go to Jaime's, go to D'Alessandro's, get a cheesesteak. Okay, um, okay. Yeah, I would say The normal thing. Philly day, eat. Eat, yeah, eat and chill good. with friends. All right, yeah. all right. Well, thank you very much, Max. Yeah, I greatly appreciate much. the time. Enjoy Pleasure. South Street. Yes. Have a wonderful a time while you're thank in you Philly. Very much. Yeah, yeah. So, are you from Philly? No. Okay, where are you from originally? North New Jersey. North New Jersey. Do you live in Philly now? No. Okay. Do you, what do you love about Philly? Like, it's a Saturday night, you could have went anywhere. Uh, I love that it's a, uh, also another black community. It was populated by uh, also more African Americans. Okay, okay. And do you feel like what about because you're part of that community? Does that make you feel safer and like more like welcome, or is it like absolutely it? okay? Absolutely. What, what? So like. I would say I love the Russian community, right? They love to drink and they're straightforward. They'll, they'll tell you, fuck you to your face or like, I like you, you know what I mean? What about the African community? Really like, obviously, right, you're in it, right? But like, what resonates with you internally? Because you, you see a lot of people that don't resonate with their community, right? You see how you, you resonate with Russian being straightforward? I resonate with African Americans. We all come from the same struggle so a lot of times we go against each other but a lot of times when we in certain situations we stick with each other you know so whether you in whether we in a bar or whether you in a club or something like that you know you stick with each other until somebody's an enemy right and even with the Russians you know in the movie Amen. you know they will kill you fast you do something wrong, you're gone. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I feel like that is needed in every community, right? And like you guys have struggled, right? This last couple of hundred years, right? 300 or 400 years, you you guys have been, you know, fucked, really, right? So it's brought you all together. I, I think we we all all of us humans, right? We need to find something to bring us all together. You know what I mean? And, and where we all have each other's backs. Because, like, I grew up in a, in a place. You see, I'm talking. Why y'all yeah, interrupting my interview? Because y'all yeah, stopped yeah, interrupting yeah, this, my interview. Day, all right, y'all yeah, 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 walk. Yeah, I'll catch y'all. I'm having an interview. Y'all, we oh, record. Interview. Yes. Oh, You're so rude. Y'all yeah, have no manners. It's okay. Thank you. I'll catch y'all. Do you need to go? Yeah. It's okay. Um, if you want, we can end the interview. I, I don't want to tie you up. Alright. Um, nice meeting you. Very nice to meet you. Let me tell you about the time when they made a fall playing basketball. They recorded. You tell you about that time. No, we weren't talking about basketball. Uh, no, they made a fall. And, 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 you know what I'm saying? I feel you. So, you ever done anything like this, John? Nah, I mean yeah, like yeah. me and my homies, we've been interviewed out front of this bar before, but okay, okay. Yeah. Are, are you from Philly? Yeah, born and raised. North okay, Philly. okay. So I'm from Northeast Linton and Frankfort. Okay. Uh, what's your? My fav homies from Frankfort. 
Okay. Yeah. Okay. Fucking Thanks for being right. the house. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm Fishtown, Kansas in area. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm Penny Packwoods. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. very nice to meet you, bro. Yeah, very nice to meet you. I like the tats. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's your favorite part of Philly? Ah, uh, just like the, the love and the, you know what I mean? Like, you have haters and all, but like, there's a lot of love in Philly, bro. The culture. There's, there's the culture, man. So like, but a specific place you have it like uh, it's a Saturday night. You're out on South oh Merce Bar, Merce Bar, Merce Bar. That's okay. my spot. I, By I work Cotman there. Ave? Nah, right there on Draw and Shackamaxon. Okay. The Irish bar that sells Italian food. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Irish bar yeah, that sells my spot, Italian bro. food. I, I worked there ten ten years. I was a okay. sous chef there. What's your favorite dish? Uh, I'll go for fucking arbiata all day. Arbiata. Arbiata, my appetizer, fry burrata. What is Arbiata? If I'm uh, a total, it's, a, it's, it's like a, a penne or garganelli noodle. Okay. Spicy cherry tomato sauce, okay. garlic. It's just simple. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Um. So Merce Bar is the place to stop. What, what brings you out to South Street? My homie. He works here. Okay. Yeah, I mean okay. the guys. Fucking figured, you know, haven't been out and about. You know, he's you know it's summertime, so. Okay. Yeah, you know. Yeah. And doing our thing. So living, in, so living in Philly forever, right? What is one thing you wish you could change about Philly? One thing that like really grinds your gears. What grinds my gears? Oh, you're pulling a Family Guy. <laughs> you're pulling a family. Oh, you know what yeah. fucking grinds my gears? <laughs> yeah. Fucking um, just like the young, invi- you know, the the younger generation, like they they, they 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 have no chill. They don't know how to have fun, and they have no respect for nobody. So like the younger generation, I feel like, you know, you better listen to your fucking old heads. And, you know, just, we're in the city of brotherly love. We're not in the city of brotherly hate, you know? We're, right, we're, right, we're here right. to, to support each other because we all come from somewhere and that somewhere could lead us somewhere, you know? Amen. Amen, Amen. yeah. Amen. So, now, do you mean like the, the hundreds of kids that meet up like down broad and cause like the scenes and... Honestly, it's it's it's, it's a lot of yeah, just yeah, yeah. Basically, just the younger generation. Like, I mean, I'm not that old, but fucking, I grew up old, and I grew up with respect. You know, yeah. especially down in North Philly. You know, like that's the thing. Like, respect's a big thing. Like, and, and a lot of kids don't have respect for their elders, and you know, like you hear all that shit with the younger kids stealing the cars and, and hitting people on bikes and you hear shit about fucking the young kids fucking doing the fucking raids and shit like that. Mm-hmm. Like, that's not cool, man. Do you think that's a respect thing or do you think that we had repercussions when we were growing up? Like somebody I had definitely repercussions. Yeah, my mom used to beat me, my grandma up to this day. Yeah, you used to talk to your mom, I hate you in the hell with a frying pan. Like, you know what I mean? Like, you don't disrespect your elders. Like. You know? Now it's just you take away the iPad. Yeah, yeah right. <laughs> no it's, belt it's, it's involved. The iPad babies, man. It's real shit. My my girl's a teacher. Okay. And um, you know she teaches seventh eighth grade history, and that's a touchy. You know what I mean? It's a touchy subject to get into, mm-hmm. but she works with all these these kids, and and you know like she tries to ensure the the values and morals that she's learned growing up, you know, and the history behind it. Right. You know. And does she feel success in, in that avenue of trying? Or yeah, I mean, she you fall on deaf ears? Working with younger kids, you know, especially, you know, you say iPad babies, I like that term. <laughs> um, you know, like, they don't know how we experience. We, we grew up outside, you know, playing fucking manhunt, you know, yes. freedom and shit, you know what yes. I mean? Like, we were outside playing basketball. I'm a skateboarder, I grew up skateboarding okay. my whole life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, we were always outside. We weren't inside, especially with the whole COVID happening. You know, right. they had every, the, the lock-ins and shit. But like, you know, we we you fall down, and you get hurt. You ain't gotta ask for an antibiotic. You just put some d- dirt on that shit and rub it off. You yeah. know, and you just keep on going. And kids like that nowadays ain't like that in Flint, Philly. Yeah. Yeah, I'm scared for the next ten years. Uh, I hope enough people talk and communicate and bring back a community that it, it, it kind of helps connect people that we don't have the issue of just just foulness. I mean, yeah. It's just foul anymore. Foul, foul. foul. Just, yeah, we need more love, we need more respect, and we need more unity. 
Yes. And this, and, and, and it's the Phillies forever, you know? Phillies forever. That's how Absolutely. I feel. Absolutely. City of brotherly love. City of brotherly love, right here. Well, thank you, John. Yeah, I nice appreciate you taking the time and yeah. talking to us. If the people wanted to follow you, how could they find you? Uh, just find me at Merce Bar. <laughs> you don't have an Instagram? Nah, we don't need it. Nah, nah yeah, fuck that. Merce yeah, Bar. Yeah, Merce, find me at Merce Bar. John, thanks, yeah. guys. Very nice to meet you guys. Stay cool. Um, <laughs> Dan, nice to meet you, ladies. T, nice to meet T, you. T, very nice to meet Desi. you. Desi. Desi, very nice to meet you. Welcome to South Street. Um, what brings you to South Street? What do you love about it? Um, it's always something to do. It's a it's a vibe for me. Like you never know what you're going to expect by the night. Like it might be something good, it might be something bad, but I feel like it's funny. Like it is day. like the wild wild west. Out yeah. Here. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, are you guys from Philly? Yes. yes. Okay. What part? I'm from West Philly. Okay. I'm from North. Okay. Do you think, have you ever lived anywhere else? No. No. Okay. Um, would you ever want to leave Philly? Yes. Yeah. What makes you want to leave Philly? It's familiar. Okay. So yeah. change it up? Yeah. Okay. I want a new, like, scenario. What do you, what do you find unique about Philadelphia? Like, have you ever traveled anywhere or, like, spent time any, like, outside Philly? Mm, yeah. I was like say... New York. Okay. So like our big brother kind yeah. of New York City. Yeah. Um, Philly is just his own place. Like it's just I can't it's, explain this, it. There's no like, other everything, place like yeah, Philly. I say, everything there's... about it is just like different. Like the way we talk, the way Philly, people we dress, are all the state. way yeah, like <laughs> Yeah. Like we literally like so I don't know, like Philly's just different. Have you ever played GTA? Like the video yeah. game? Yeah. I think Philly's a lot like GTA. But we just I feel like, that, we I feel just like it is now. Like too. now, I feel like it is. But like when I was a kid growing up, I didn't feel like it wasn't that crazy back then. New York is Maybe like didn't get too. out as much. Okay. <laughs> I feel like since the 70s, Philly has been like almost its own little areas have sections, you know what I mean? Like Kensington, world known, right? Yeah, 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 like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then like you have Fishtown, very close to Kensington, mm -hmm. but very drastically different, right? Mm -hmm. Like in GTA, it's kind of like you move across the map and it's a whole new realm, right? right like right, Philadelphia, right. I feel like that's what makes it unique. It's like you go to different right. areas and, and it's, it's so a different, to yeah, yeah, yep. totally different yeah. world. You're yeah. like, whoa. Yeah. Like I was right around the corner and I was looking at People we were just talking yeah. about like how big Philly is, like especially like when you filling out for jobs and you you go to them, you like I never heard of this, and it's like in Philadelphia. Right, right. Yeah. It is. Uh, it is cool. What is one thing you guys wish you could change about Philly, like that gets on your the nerves? The violence. The violence. Yeah. The violence. The hate. What do you think would change the violence and the hate? Like if you if you could so if you were in charge of solving it, right? What what do you think would you know? Fucking money. Money. You if think people had more money and like more access to like stuff that they was able to get money without having to do illegal stuff, it would be a little bit better. Okay. I feel as though like if people could just come together and actually like just help each other instead of like trying to compete with each other, I feel like that would make more peace in Philly. I get that. Cause it's like a lot of people hate on somebody because they got more money than them, so it's like they don't want to see you doing better than them. So mm -hmm. it's like they'll try to bring you down just so they can feel like they're up. That is a very unique, like, human thing, right? Like, mm -hmm. instead of supporting one another, yeah. almost making a giant human pyramid, mm -hmm. we're kind of like, oh, yeah, I'll hold you up, and then go like, oh. Yeah, as soon as you start getting more up than me, it's yeah. like, oh, I gotta, gotta stand back now. Yeah, 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 I gotta, I gotta support myself. And, like, we would all do better if we all did and helped one another. Right. Like, you right. look at, like, the Indian culture, like, the Russian culture, they, like, come over with a whole family, live in one house. It might be uncomfortable, right? Yeah, but, but they help each other, yeah. Yeah, and then they save money because they're all in one house, you know, mm -hmm. 10 of them, 20 of them, right? And then they get, like, a, a storefront or I'm a business. Say businesses and, yeah. Yeah, and now they set for life, yeah. Yeah, and, like, they all work as a team. It's not, like, random people working in the business. It's, like, all your cousins and your family mm -hmm. yeah. working, it's taking together. different shifts. So not everybody's home at once, but everybody's either at work or home. And it keeps all the money yeah. in the family, you know yeah. what I mean? Um, where, like, in America, they don't teach you that. They'd say, yeah. go get a job at McDonald's or, yeah. like, and some office like job. And I they want us to be like that. Like, I feel like it, it, like, they planted it like that, like, and we fell for it. Well, how do you, right, how do you 
keep people paying for your bills if you're the billionaire, right? Like, you gotta structure it correctly. Like, these people, we're intelligent, right? Mm -hmm. Human beings, Mm -hmm. right? It's just, what kind of things do we have to figure out? Like, us at this level, we have to figure out how we're gonna pay our rent, how we're gonna pay the mortgage or the car payment, how Mm -hmm. Junior's gonna, like, pay to go to school. They don't think about that. Mm -hmm. That's all covered, right? Right, right, It's like, what business do I want to own next? What venture do I want to do next? Like, how do I get five generations of wealth? We're like, how do I buy a do house? Do a nail, yeah. Right. Like, how, how we get this the day, yeah. this the week, or so the year, yeah. It's a lot, and like you said, it, it would change a lot of things. Not only violence, but stress, like suicide, people's mm-hmm. depression. Like, they say, like, rich people don't even have TVs in their house, right? Like, Yeah, I don't watch TVs like that, yeah. Mm-hmm. You see, it wasn't a TV. Like, I don't have a TV in my room and stuff know. here. And it's not it's, even because... It's, it's, just sometimes, like... Okay. It's, it's, I got it's a TV like, everywhere. I got TVs everywhere. And, like, I'm one of those people that will stand in line on Black Friday and, like, run through the door to buy a TV. And I, I was mean, just saying how I don't stand in line. Really? Yeah. She, yeah, she yeah, don't yeah. like standing in line. Okay. No. Yeah. Okay. So... <laughs> I will leave. <laughs> <laughs> but have you seen people like when they have Wawa Hoagie Fest and they walk the whole block and it's a yeah. whole block of people waiting for a six dollar hoagie. Yeah, okay. yeah cause, just because it's free. Right. Yeah. But like some of those people, right, they don't have that six dollars. Like that's yeah. like, oh, I, I, I can get Wawa this week for free? Like I usually got to save, you know what I mean? Or work an extra hour at work or whatever, you know? So like when you get to super rich, it's a totally different stress level. Yeah. You're waking up with one or two issues. Like, we're waking up with 15 or 20. We're trying to, like, prioritize the bigger ones. And, um, I, you know, I think, I hope our generation talks to one another enough that, like, we can change the tidal wave. Because all those people are getting old. Like, they're yeah. not going to be, you know, around. And, yeah. like, the kids that they prospered, they don't... They kind of live off the coin, yeah, right? They're yeah. not like... Having to work for it. Right, yeah. so they're not built to fight for it. So when we go yep. to not necessarily take that away, right, but change, right? They're not going to know how to defend it because they didn't yeah, build they didn't it. They didn't build it, yeah. They didn't have to work for it. They just yeah. was give, yeah, right? They just yeah. Give us it all. yeah. Mm-hmm. So um, one thing you could change about Philly was violence. One thing... What is one thing you think Philadelphians need to talk more about? Like, we say hi to one another on the street, like, how's your day? How do you think it would impact you more on a daily life if you talk to people more normalized, you know? How do you think? I feel like, for me personally, I'm not a people's person. Okay, more of an introvert. My resting bitch face is like really mean okay but i'm not mean but sometimes i just don't feel like being bothered but i do want to like change my own like personality or like being just more friendly you know what i mean so like when people walk up to me i want them to feel comfortable to say hello to me absolutely so, and i mean you're very personable you came and you sat down and you've been it's humble new because if i was by myself i would have been like <laughs> Why do you think that is? I don't, I don't know. I just... Is it an anxiety thing? I feel like it is. Okay. I feel like it is. Okay. And I is get the, nervous. Okay. What makes you nervous? I get nervous too, right? I'm nervous right now. I'm talking to two complete strangers. I can <laughs> say something to you and right. you could be like, fuck this dude. <laughs> right? Like, who the fuck is he to say? And I'm like, oh, you know, that's happened to me before. We have and no I, idea. I your it. perspective and your perspective, you've lived totally different lives. We've all. Mm-hmm. So we don't know our triggers, right? And do you think the resting bitch face that you, you bring up do you think that's just naturally because yeah. you've gotten accustomed to like just not wanting to talk to people or do you think that's something like i grow out my hair long out right so like people don't take me for my looks right like i used to dress all fancy like and have my hair all done nice and then people would get to know me and they'd be like oh this isn't you know the car i wanted you know what i mean so do you do you think the the resting bitch face is something that you choose to do subconsciously, or do you think it's like a, a I result feel like of not it's wanting just to talk? Natural. Okay. Like it's, 
I don't know. Like, I smile when I want to, but I just feel like me just walking down the block, just smiling for nothing. I don't know. I feel like it's, it's cringy hard. To me. Yeah. It's hard. It's hard. Like, to if choose. someone look at me, like, I smile. <laughs> I don't know. But, it doesn't make you comfortable. Yeah, it's just like, why are you just staring at me? Like, if like if you want to say hello, say hello. Then I'll say hello back. But if you're just like, well, some people don't know how to communicate. Like, yeah. I I grew up a very like I don't know like I was picked on for anything, right? Mm -hmm. So like, no matter what I said, somebody was gonna say something negative about it, right? So. Yeah. I've just kind of adapted to talk to anybody about mm -hmm. anything. Be very open, you know? And somebody's going to judge you no matter what. So right, yeah. right. why not talk, right? But it, it's tough. Some people, like I still think about, and I'm sure you guys think, like some things some people say to me sit with me for years, Yeah. right? Like, oh, like why they say that about me? And like you don't think about yourself in that way before somebody says that, mm -hmm. right? And, and then like, you you get to it. Insecure about it. Right. Right. Is there anything that sits with you guys like that? Mm. When you're going maybe to get dressed or like you're going to like talk to a new person and say hi to somebody. Like I've like even like dates, like going on first dates, like I've gone on random dates with like a random person you just talk to for a little bit, you meet at like a Starbucks and then they just like you say something triggers them and they're like, Whoa, fuck you, pretty mm -hmm. like fascist and I'm like, Oh, I don't know about that like you know <laughs> And, like, it's just, like, you think about things differently. Like, mm -hmm. that is somebody's honest perspective of you. They get, like, ten minutes with you in life. Yeah. And, like, that's how they see you. Ooh, what are you putting out into the world? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And it kind of makes you shelter. So, like, some people, like I, like I said, I was bullied through, like, elementary school and middle school. So, like, some people, if they've never heard a negative thing about them, they don't know how to process right, it. Yeah. That sits with them for years and they don't, they're not ready for that next one. Right, mm -hmm. so those, like you said, like with the resting bitch face, kind of shelter yourself from that interaction. You don't have to deal with it. So why? You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, so like, I I hope the world changes where like, in schools, right? Like we're taught how to deal with that. Like I'm sure you learned a lot about arithmetic and like biology. Yeah, like nothing for emotional. Yeah. Yeah, yep. Trauma and that and results like that. in the yeah. violence that we see every day or the depression, like how to deal with the stress of not being able to pay a bill. Mm -hmm. Where the fuck was the class on that? <laughs> yeah, you know no, what I mean? Don't. Yeah. A lot of and, bad things and, result. In America, I feel like they don't even teach us that type of stuff. Like, But in like other countries, they do. Like, a lot of people that come from other countries are really like very intelligent and like they just know more than what we know. Like, it's, they have it's, a sense of I love it. community in other countries. I say getting more gathered and like yeah. structured and like they're actually taught like real stuff. Like, is that one thing you wish you could change? Maybe yeah. The, mm -hmm. I feel like we. I feel like uh, like in America, like we need to learn stuff like that too. Like I feel like that would have helped a lot of my generation and past generations as well, and for the future. Because it's like, if I don't know something that this person knows, how can I teach my kids or my nieces and nephews or cousins or so on? So it's like... Right? What is one thing you wish uh, people would talk more about? Um, actual resources. People um, with full resourceful information because they don't, you know, like they feel like... This is a bunch of reasons why, you get what I'm saying? Some people just say ego, some people, you know, like, they're just weird, you know, like, it, it really don't look, but resourceful stuff. Like, like a lot people, of people gatekeeping. Yeah. yeah. And not even about, like, just about, like, everyday things. Like, I remember I met a girl, and she was telling me how her credit score was, like, an 800. And she didn't have, like, a house or car enough. And I'm like, girl, do you know that? Like, they would give you whatever you want. On a just because platter. you just because your credit score is at and i'm like nobody ever told you this but 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 you have told people that your credit score was 800 but nobody re like responded in a way so what are you you get what i'm saying so what are you doing why is your credit score 800 you have nothing when that right there that that eight zero zero just paid for your life yeah you get what i'm saying like but it's people that literally not tell you that 
for what? I don't know. Sometimes they, they would genuinely know it. You get what I'm saying? But it's because their credit score is about 800. They, you get what I'm saying? And it's like, yeah, no, I don't like stuff like that. Well, they think and assume you know, right? If you have an 800 well, credit yeah, score, yeah, yeah, but, but even stuff like that, like, just assume that people don't know. A lot of people don't know a lot of stuff. Like, people don't, they don't know yeah. stuff. Well, we weren't, I don't think we were taught the right things. Exactly. So that's what I'm saying. Like, and the, the stuff that people, like, want you to know is not what you need to know. It's stuff that ain't got nothing to do with you. People just yeah. want to gossip. You know what I'm saying? So it's like if people start actually people communicating and talk about having something. a re- yeah, having a reason to talk, like, genuinely talk about something, then it'll be different. People don't talk about the right stuff. Do you know what the term filibustering is? So like in Congress, right? If you want to get something passed and you want to just drag things on, right? Okay. It's called filibustering. You just, you just you'll bl- get up, blabbering. Yeah, yeah you'll get just... up and just read out of a book for hours until people were like, all right, all right we'll all do right, whatever yeah. you want, right? Okay. So like imagine if you were a billionaire and you were just like, how do I waste a whole generation's time? And then if they want a job, right? I'll sell them the ability to work, what we call college, right? You gotta go get a degree in order to hopefully get to my level, right? Right, right. What would you want them to learn in the first 12 years if you want to charge them for eight? Right. Just nonsense. Just, I about to say just, just anything. The anything. same stuff that they already went to school for when he was in first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Mm-hmm. Yep. Just make it a little harder yeah. each year. Like yep. get them the calculus level. They'll never need calculus. Ever. They'll, they'll, we'll give them a calculator. Yeah. You know yep. what I mean? Like I went to school. They taught us how to build a calculator. Right. So that was resourceful. I learned electrical engineering in high right. school. So like. That was a practical thing that I built what I have and what you see. So I was fortunate where like the peers that went to like a normal high school where like I didn't feel accepted, right? Like they went to college and they're barely, you know, figuring out what they want to do in life. They're struggling with that, right? There's no sense of community that showed them like, hey, you might want to do this. Hey, you might want to do this. Like, we used to call it mentors, right? Like, you'd have a mentor. Hey, is that what they was when I was talking about that? Um, the people that be with you in school? I believe that that's what it's called. So, and like, a Like, me- you're bad in school, and they put you in a class with, like, other bad kids. But you get that person that, like, be with you, and they help you? That's so, a guidance mentors, counselor right? or a mentor, yes. Okay, yes. yeah, so, yeah, yeah, I knew it was a mentor. Like, yeah, the um, mentors. you yeah. know, Karate Kid? Yeah. The instructor? his mentor right wax on wax off he taught him a way of life right like when you come across this bridge this is how you cross it a good way and a bad way Mm -hmm. right um and we don't have that anymore like some people gravitate towards maybe an english teacher or a lit teacher like somebody they form a bond with and or communicate with outside school but it's not a common practice that like you go and you stay with a teacher for four years six years or 12 years like imagine if it was like a lower like uh, a more rural school right mm-hmm. and it's a small school building where like you're in the same building from k to 12 right you're gonna see the same, same people teachers, you're yeah. gonna be familiar and yeah have build that more bond. of an intimate yeah relationship yeah. yeah and we don't have that anymore so like and, and i feel like that is how you learn what you want to do in life the person that you pick to be your mentor Mm -hmm. right and that's like a very important thing you have your parents and then you have the person you almost idolize right you want to follow in their footsteps that's how we got legendary people hundreds of years ago like um, you know the painters and the engineers and even Albert Einstein like they followed in somebody else's footsteps Mm -hmm. they saw something cool right like you go out and you see like a skater or a motorcyclist and you're like, I want to do that, right? And then right. you go out and get a skateboard or a bicycle. Now it's, you got to pick a, a, a thing, like if you want to become a doctor, or a policeman or a firefighter, you got to pick that and say two years or four years or eight, eight years, years of school. Yeah. And yeah. then you get out to be a doctor and they're like, well, you got to touch some piss and shit and blood and this person's <laughs> going to come in she's going to cry and bite bit. you uh, how about say pinch you a little bit fight you because they forgot who you are <laughs> right you're going to you're going to save this person's life cuz they're ODing and they're going to stab you with a needle when they wake up mm-hmm. you're going to hate that job some one maybe you love it maybe you're crazy right but some out of those 40 people that just got their doctrines are going to hate that job yep. but be $250,000 in debt and have no choice you're going to be like well you can be homeless 
or go to work for 12 hours a day for the next 15 years, you know? It's it's a scary cycle. Yeah. Anything else to say to the people? Um, no, but it was nice doing this. Yeah, yeah like in, I like talking about stuff like this. I want to say... <coughs> so, yeah. <laughs> I just want to say, like, don't give up on whatever it is that you're reaching for. Like, keep trying, keep yourself motivated. Like, don't look for other people to motivate you because some people are not going to motivate you because they want to see you fail. Mm -hmm. So we got, it's a mindset thing. You got to always manifest, manifest, manifest and speak about it like you already have it. Yeah. And just do your thing. Absolutely. Amen. You're the only one that can walk that path at the end of the day. So yep. it doesn't look like anybody else's road. Mm -hmm. So just charge forward. Yep. Um, thank well, thank if they wanted to find you, do you all have Instagram? Yep. Um, mine is rickin.desi, R-I-C-A-N dot D-E-S-S-I. My name is Meg Mommy, M-A-C underscore M-O-M-M-I-I-E-E. -E. Well, T and Des, right? Desi, yeah. Desi, thank you very much for sitting thank down with me. Thank you for having us. Appreciate this is, you. I like this. Yeah, this is like nice. This. I like this experience. Yeah, I like it was this. cute. Thank I was you. a little nervous because I don't know what I'd be saying. But I like this. I feel like this should be done more. Like there should be more people doing this everywhere. Yeah, Talking more versatility yeah. and stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. I feel like that would be a good cool. Oh no. It's not raining right now, is it? It's it a little bit. Yeah. You got a lot of expensive no. equipment yeah. out here. It's okay. Mm -hmm. It'll last for as the minute. As... Okay. We'll, we'll see, right? If things start catching on fire, I might scramble <laughs> like a crazy yeah, no, person. for sure. Uh, it's all weather rated, they say. So let's put it to the test. Okay. If you guys could introduce yourselves. I am Shay. I'm Jindaya. I'm Lega. Very nice to meet you. Thank you for taking the time to sit down with me. I appreciate it. So are you guys from Philly? Yes. Yes. Okay, what parts? I'm from North Philly. Okay. Uh, uptown. Uptown? I'm West Philadelphia. Okay, so uh, how do you guys all know each other? We model together. You guys yes. model. Okay, yes. so not, you know, too uh, shy around the camera. That's no. good. That's good. <laughs> I um, am camera shy a little bit. <laughs> Just a teeny bit. What do you guys love about modeling? Um, like, for me, cre the creativity. Okay. I would say that. Okay. Modeling, it always been, I'm into fashion. Okay, okay. I like have, to look cool. Have you guys done Philly Fashion Week? Not yet. No. no. Not yet. It's cool. Yeah, um, it's good. If you hit them up on Philly Fashion Week, they're inside uh, the Fashion District Mall, the mm -hmm. guys that run it. And uh, However, you know. I have done London Fashion Week. That's cool. Mm, there you. you go, Shay. There you go. <laughs> Killing it. Um, that, what was that experience like? Um, it was really great. I love the experience of the culture and getting able, being able to see the different um, significant monuments in London and just getting to know a little bit more about the culture. Um, it's a little bit different for fashion there in the UK as it is here in the city. Yeah. So um, I love just the experience of being able to do something different. Okay, cool, cool. Have you ever gone to New York Fashion Week? I have. There you go, yes. there you go. It's cool that like, so like, I, I, I haven't done London, that's pretty dope, right? <laughs> but I, I do find that every fashion week is kind of like its own kind of disorganized mm -hmm. chaos, but mm -hmm. super creative right. fun, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? Definitely. Um, I, I don't know. Being a photographer, videographer, we get a different end of fashion okay. week. It's like, you're kind of like fighting each other for the photo, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? Have you guys ever looked at the media pits at like fashion Definitely. week? Definitely. Like, it's just like... 40 people crammed into six feet and you're Definitely. just like, oh, mm -hmm. who do I look at? Or you have the own, you know, you have the media pit at your own fashion show. However, we do have a modeling team, Models of Baltimore and Philadelphia. Okay. So, yeah, it's kind of, it's you know, it's a it's a lot going on in the, the media world, in the fashion show industries, a bunch of cameras and just yes. a lot happening at one time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, what is your favorite part of Philadelphia? You guys have like a favorite place in Philly you go to? Um. favorite place but I would say anywhere that's very therapeutic for me okay the place that I that comes to mind is like Bartram Gardens type of thing okay. I'm a nature's type of girl so okay so outside you. kind of relax yeah. okay there you go 
What about you guys? Um, I personally like stuff where there's a lot to do. So I'm always downtown. There you go. Uh, there's always something like right around the corner. It's always something to do downtown. Whether it's just going out to eat, you want to go bowling, you want to just go I'll skiing. Eat. Anything like anything you want to do is always downtown. So. Okay. Okay. Um, for me, favorite part of Philadelphia with I have maybe three locations. Well, I hike with Black Girls Hike every other weekend. Um, okay. We okay. do different places. I would have to say my favorite may be, I think that's Ridley Park off of, what is that? Not Kelly Drive. Um, mm. <laughs> that's terrible. <laughs> <laughs> Martin Luther King Drive. Okay, okay there we go. Okay. Martin Luther King Drive. Um, but other than that, I would have to say my unwinding place would be Kelly Drive. Okay. Um, it is very beautiful. I down typically there. like to, you know, take occasional car wise, go to Kelly Drive, listen to some music, unwind if I'm having a long, stressful day. There you go. Um, so, yeah, I would have to definitely say, like, Kelly Drive or hiking, you know, throughout different trails or throughout the city with my girls would probably definitely be one of my one or two favorite places out of Philly. Well, at least you guys got healthy habits and you get out and stay active. That's good. That's good. What is one thing that uh, you don't like about Philly? Violence. 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 Mm-hmm. Violence is one of the biggest things. If it's not that, the non-cleanness. Mm. It is yeah. kind of trashy everywhere you look. There's Pollution. trash. Yeah. Okay. Um, what about you? Um. Violence is one of them for sure. Uh, another thing, I don't know. I like Philly. It's a city. Like I'm, a, I'm a city kind of person. Oh, traffic, 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 traffic. Well, for I me. don't drive. I personally no. <laughs> the city is overpopulated as so. hell. I heard people talk about traffic all the time. That's why I just got myself a little bus pass. I can get anywhere in the city, <laughs> and I can go out of the city. I'll be going to Delaware. I can get anywhere with a bus pass. So there I'm you like, go. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. So like, I don't like dislike the city. It's just it'd be too much going. You know how it's like everybody in one place, and it's not just the thing I love about Philly too is like we're all just not one person. You got black people, you got Italian people, so many different yeah, kind of things. Mm-hmm. So no matter what part of the city you go to, you get a little like flavor from somewhere else, and it all adds to everybody's personality. And I think that's really beautiful. So like, it's not a part of Philly that I don't like to go to. I think it's I've not, outgrown like, my city. You did. I wasn't like I was born here, but I wasn't raised here, so I just like being here. Anyway. I was both. I feel like my time is good. I mean, yeah, you gotta grow, so I understand you for sure. I love my city, though. You know, I'm for sure. I'm from North Florida, you know. Yeah. Okay. You know? I'm like very a homebody, so like okay. I barely know parts of the city. Keep it a Okay, okay. <laughs> it, it's so. Do you, do you know what GTA is? Like mm-hmm. the video game, I feel like Philly is a lot like GTA. GTA. Like every, oh GTA, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. I grew up on GTA. Yeah, mm-hmm. every, I used to sit in front of my TV and emissions all sure. day. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but everywhere you go in GTA, like a different part of the map is a whole nother realm, right. right? Like Philly is just like that North Philly, West Philly, Kensington, like Kelly Drive, uh, like yeah. you know Liberties, yeah. Northern Liberty. It's all like different world. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Um, what is one thing you guys wish? Philly people would do better to one another. Like, if one thing you could change about your daily interactions with normal Philadelphia people, make it normal. Like, we say, hey, or what's up, like, have a good day. What would you change? I know I it's would, a hard one. When it comes to, like, me being in Philly, walking around Philly streets and stuff, it's like the negative. Than anything that's negative. Okay. Period. I would say more positive interactions. So, like, what would a positive interaction be to you? Like, if I said, hey, you look great today, have a great day. Like that? Mm hmm. Okay. Or, I mean, like, maybe for us as a community, I feel like we don't support each other enough yes, exactly. as a whole. Yes. Um, I feel like being a business owner myself, it's a lot of you know every man for themselves as opposed to really like supporting one another or coming together and you know kind of really eliminating the fact of who's going to benefit first from it or you know who can get there first or it's like instead of what can we do to support each other to be able to for both of us to reach the same goal or the same level or you know whatever the case may be when I started my business I didn't really have anybody to help me 
So I had to figure it out on my own as opposed to now where it's like if anybody asks me for help, I'm gonna tell you how I got there or I'm gonna tell you how I did it, how I did it. So I feel like in a community, I feel like we could definitely support each other more as opposed to figuring out, you know, who might get there first or who might benefit from it more. Right. Um, I feel like, you know, if we came together and supported each other a lot more, I feel like our community as a whole would be a lot more beneficial as a, you know, every man for themselves, like I said before, you know, trying to figure out, you know, who's going to get, get the first come up or who's going to come up faster than the other person or vice versa. Amen. And I mean, if you look at a lot of other communities around the world, not all of them, but a lot of them, like India and mm-hmm. Russia, they're very community driven. You know what I mean? Like, it's very like, help one another and like, don't even mention it. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? You just do it because that's what it's about. You know? Um, yeah, and, and that's kind of the common thing when I ask that question is a lack of community. It feels like we haven't been taught in our schools to be like nobody is tested right you're tested on individual smartness and Mm -hmm. like abilities nobody's tested together right but that's not real life you know i mean you are tested separately at your most crucial fucking times in life but like on your general day you are abundantly surrounded by people with unique abilities to help you you know Mm -hmm. what i mean And, and like we don't talk about it nobody talks about it you know like you guys are friends and you guys hang out and you guys do things one another and things come up where you're like oh i can do that for you and it's like something that you may struggle with it may be something that comes easy to you right but you don't know that without witnessing it and exploring that and going through it right but without that kind of community you have none of that I'm a firm believer in it takes a village. Yes. Firm believer in it takes a village. So most definitely. Yeah. Well, thank you guys very much for sitting down and thank talking you so with much, me. Man. I appreciate yeah, you it's taking nice the to time. Meet you. Very nice to meet you. If anybody nice wanted to, meet to you. follow you guys, how could they find you on the grams? Um, you can find us on the gram. I am Shay S H A Y dot X X I I, or you can follow us on the gram at Models of Baltier B A L T I E R E. I'm T H E E model Jendaya J E N D A Y E. I am S H A L A Y A T A N A E at actually dot underscore. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Can't forget. I always forget that. But yeah. Go. Well, thank you very much, ladies. Thank Have a great you. night. You too. You too.